Welcome, I'm Nate Miller and this is Cage Cash where we have one goal and this is to get you winners in 15 minutes or less. Today we're going to be doing uh, a little bit shorter than 15 minutes, probably a little bit less than 10. Uh, today we're going to be covering Bellator 119 and UFC Ultimate Fight Night 40. Uh, there have been a few injuries on the Bellator cards, so there have been a few changes to the lineup. Uh, as far as I know, the actual UFC card is pretty much the same. Uh, Pretty exciting card. This actual uh, Casino Rama Bellator card. This I, this was a really solid card, and then obviously some Gaharia uh, couldn't get in, so the Shum Halayev match is, is kicked off. Uh, Brett Cooper got injured, so now the middleweight final is off. Chris Horadecki had some problems, now his bout with Marlon Sanders off. So three of the the really exciting fights on here are now gone. So it's really pretty basic. And I have to admit, I'm not excited about these lines. It's pretty slim pickings, but we will make the most of it. And I actually did come up with a pretty decent bet that I am going to be suggesting. Uh, but if you haven't guessed already, this is going to be a pretty simple show. I'm not going to be doing too much editing and making it too pretty for you. It's just going to be simple audio with a couple of base pictures. But uh, we shall survive. Um... Yeah, I will have one suggested play for Bellator and UFC, but before we get to that, a word from our sponsor, The Mod Cabin. Enter code CAGECASH at checkout and get free domestic shipping on any and all Mod Cabin purchases. If you are a man, or even a woman for that matter, in, in need of beard or, or grooming accessories, look no further than The Mod Cabin. I cannot stress this enough. They are the best in the business. I, I, I personally have a beard. If you can follow me on, on Twitter at NateMillerMMA, I would love to share my Mod Cabin experiences. Uh, also coming in, word from Counter Move. Last week's winner, Joe Jack, Walsh, and uh, Diami all came in with 417 points. Uh, Three-way tie for first place. Pretty rare. We will be having another counter move game for Bellator 119, so check that out on the Cage Cash Facebook page at facebook.com slash cagecash.mma. But without further ado, let's just get right into Bellator uh, 119 breakdown. All right, there are currently five lines for Bellator 119. Uh, I'm not going to do my usual flans, uh, flashy pictures and uh, graphics and, you know, all the this and that. You can just listen to what I'm saying this time around. But, uh, yeah, we have one line for the prelims. That's going to be Brian Rogers versus Adrian Miles. Uh kind of an interesting bout. Everybody likes Brian Rogers because of his crazy flying knee knockout versus Vitor Viana. Uh, Adrian Miles, he's a Muay Thai guy, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy, not very well-rounded, not very good cardio. His last couple of wins, he's on a very small win streak, but they're coming against absolute cans. These are absolute nobodies. And uh, Although Brian Rogers hasn't looked the same of late and his big problem has been cardio, I expect Miles to suffer from the same issues and Brian Rogers to easily keep this on the feet and uh, land those big shots. And so I am taking Brian Rogers in this fight. At negative 280, a little bit more expensive than I wanted, but uh, I am actually going to be taking that in a parlay. I'll just get that out of the bat right now. Also, I'm the under one and a half at plus 130. I can see this being a possibility. Uh, obviously, they, they view it under one and a half because they think it's going to be a shorter fight. If it's under two and a half, this was a must take. But you know, that was that was just. I, I always hope for things that are never going to happen. But uh, yeah, under one and a half plus 130. That's a possible play. But as of right now, I'm just taking Brian Rogers in a two-man parlay. Moving on to the next fight, Eric Wisely versus John Alessio. John Alessio, slight favor here, negative 155. Uh, if anything, parlay the over 2.5 here at negative 260. I see that definitely happening. John Alessio, his fights always seem to go the distance lately. But uh, when I first saw this, I know Eric Wisely, not the greatest wrestler, but I just can't see how John Alessio can't get away from the wrestlers. No matter who he fights, he fights a wrestler. And so I'm actually going to go with Eric Wisely here. I'm actually going to pick an upset. But this is, a, this is a no bet for me. This is a dog or pass fight. If you're putting money on John Alessio at this stage of his career, you're, you know, you're nat and it flies. You need to let that one go. Uh, moving on to our next one. This will actually close off my suggested bet. Uh, Rafael Butler versus Nick Rossboro. Uh, Nick, just not ready for this. He's what you call a step up. He's what you call a can crusher. He's, he gets paid to go in there and get hurt. And he's going in against Rafael Butler, who they are prompting uh, and, and, and prepping and getting ready and and, uh, and, 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 and prepping him for the next uh, tournament. He's going to be in the next heavyweight tournament. And negative uh, 700, he's a huge favorite here. But it's astronomical to me how this guy can be a negative 700 favorite. But the other one and a half, the under one and a half rounds is currently only negative 170. That makes no sense to me. I, all of, all of uh, Rafael Butler's fights have ended very quickly. In his boxing career he uh, we had a little bit of a rough stint at the end but he was a finisher. In his MMA career all his, all his fights have been uh, pretty much under two rounds. And so I definitely like this prop under one and a half, negative 170. I'm going to be parlaying that with Brian Rogers, negative 280. That comes out around plus 116. That's actually my suggested bet for uh, uh, Bellator 118, or 119. Uh, but just for fun we're going to preview the last two fights. We also have Vaughn Anderson versus Marius Zoromskis. Uh, Marius Zoromskis, former dream champion uh, Strikeforce number one contender 
He's coming at negative 280 against Vaughn Blood Anderson, who's a, 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 he's a trainer over in China, one of China's premier gyms. He's the head coach over there. He's a very undersized for the weight class. My main concern here is the fact, although Zoromska should win this most days of the week, he hasn't fought in a little over a year, and his last fight was a very questionable, weird fight to Brent Weedman. So I don't really know where he's at. This is a fight you really don't want to touch. I'm also looking at the under and over. Decent money either way, however you play it, but uh, just doesn't interest me. This is not a fight that I want to play. Uh, now moving on to our main event of the evening for the featherweight tournament final, Daniel Veitchel versus Desmond Green. A lot of people are going to be on Des Green here. If you hadn't guessed, I'm going the other way. I like Daniel Veitchel. Uh, one thing you do have to take into account here is that Des Green, he, he's a party pooper. He doesn't like to fight, but he, one thing he does have offensively on the feet is decent elbows. We saw that in his uh, very first, uh, or his second Bellator fight, uh, his first non-tournament bout. He came out, and he has very vicious elbows on the feet, and this being the tournament final, he will be allowed to use his elbows. But uh, besides that, he doesn't like fun. He's come here, he's, he, he comes in to take you down, lay and pray. On the feet, he's going to run away all day, jab, stick and move. He's not going to have a fun fight. I don't think Des Green's ever had a fun fight besides that one fight that he just had brutal elbows like I just mentioned. But besides that, Daniel Veitchel, I think he wins this fight on activity. I don't know if he can finish Des Green. I definitely think he has the submission game and he has the striking. If he could land a big shot, he could probably finish it. But this is definitely one I see going the distance. If you're going to play this fight, I know a lot of people are taking Des Green at a negative 160 favorite. There's money there. Uh, but I'd take the over 2.5 at negative 215. I'd probably say that was something. But I'm not going to play this fight. I already gave you my suggested play. But uh, Daniel Veitchel plus 140. If he gets high higher by fight time. I'll probably end up playing him. I know there's a lot of smart people out there on Des Green, and I respect their opinions, but uh, I just don't see how you win on inactivity, and he's not going to be inactive. He didn't want to be on this card. He wanted to be on the New Jersey card. Now he's going up to Canada, so he's not going to be all mentally there, I don't think, and uh, I know he wants this. He'll obviously be prepared, but I just, uh, it, it's a tough fight to call. Not going to straight play, but like I did say, if, if you are one of the guys on Des Green, I think you're going to be sweating a decision. And on to Ultimate Fight Night 40. Uh, not going to cover the whole card. Obviously, there's plenty of podcasts that cover the entire card, so you don't need me jibber-jabbing about everything. But uh, looking at it, keeping it really simple, I'm eyeing a few plays. I always, I don't ever suggest them usually, but uh, I am eyeing a few dogs on here. I do uh, throw them out. And I, I do have a really good record of the dogs that I throw out there and, and don't actually suggest on the show. So, hey, just keep that in mind. Uh couple of the dogs. I'm actually eyeing Ed Herman plus 115 versus Hafiel Natal. I don't think Hafiel Natal is that good, and I don't think he's ever beaten anybody who is half decent. Ed Herman's no world beater, but he definitely has enough skill on the ground and the feet to keep this interesting for three rounds, and so at plus 115, anybody with some skill at plus money versus Hafiel Natal, I'm, I'm definitely going to play that all day, but that's just my personal bias. But that's not our suggested play. Uh, this other dog, I'm again not suggesting. I actually like Matt Brown in the main event. I know everybody and their mother is on Eric Silva. I think Eric Silva has a huge submission advantage. Uh, not as much as everybody else. Everybody thinks since Matt Brown got submitted a lot a couple of years ago that he's just as bad as he ever was, but I think he's improved quite a bit. While Eric Silva's specialty is submission grappling, that is still dangerous. He does have a big cardio issue and uh, has been knocked out and has been shown to be rather chinny, whereas Matthew Immortal Brown has never been knocked out. Does get tired, but does not quit, and uh, I do give him the advantage in this fight. Uh, uh, maybe one of the very few. But again, not suggesting it. If I look on this card, there's a bunch of really heavy favorites. I mean, you got Nick Lentz, negative 370. You got Eddie Wine negative 425, uh, Jan Cabral, negative 370, a uh, whole bunch of guys, Soa Playley, negative 230, Tim Means, negative 270, Eric Koch, negative 350, Lawrence Larkin, negative 230, I mean, a lot of heavy favorites, a lot of chalk on this card. Not as much as the last pay-per-view card, but uh, if I was going to pick a couple of guys and find a plus-money play, I would I would have to take three guys and uh, put them together for you. And these are three guys that I just don't see how they lose. And uh, the first one's going to be Nick Lentz. Nick Lentz, negative 370. He's coming in against uh, Manny Gambirian, which we've heard uh, recently from an interview with Carl Parisian, Manny's cousin, which even though they're not on good terms, he has said that Manny has gone back to his judo because he, he just now, after a few years, realized that he's not a very good striker and he needs to give that up. Uh, Manny does have some power, but besides that, He's pretty useless on the feet. Uh, his throws are pretty much non-existent, so unless he's really trained on it and gone back to him, I don't see them being very useful. And Nick Lentz is just a killer. I mean, we all know Chad Mendez was sick, uh, but he still landed those big shots. He, can, he still hits really hard, sick or not. Nick Lentz took those and kept coming forward for three rounds. I know We know he, he was dominated. We all expected him to be, but he just showed his grit and his toughness, and I see this as, as, a, as a clean sweep for him. I, he might even get a finish, which is not very Nick lentz but uh, I definitely see him at least having a wrestling and cardio advantage, and that's really all it takes to beat Manny Gambier. And so first... 
uh, leg of our three-part parlay is Nick Lentz, negative 370. The second part I want to include is going to be Tim Means, negative 270. Uh, I'm a little worried the fact Neil Mangley uh, does have a five-inch reach advantage. He's a little bit taller. Tim Means, while he has had some success at welterweight outside the UFC, he's, this is his first fight back, uh, former lightweight now up at 170. Uh, I just think he's, he hits a lot harder. I think he's a lot better. Uh, if the fight hits the ground, I definitely give him an advantage. Neil's a decent enough boxer, and like I said, he has a reach advantage. But once again, like I said, uh, barring a, a freak decision, I don't see how Tim Means loses this, this fight. And so I want to parlay him, negative 270, with Nick Lentz, negative 370. And that is going to cap off with Lawrence Larkin, negative 235. Now, I know Larkin didn't look that great in his last fight, but he still has really impressed me. The monsoon, man. His striking is amazing. His ground game's really come around. Uh... Costa Filippo, I have to say, he's been on the decline. He got a little cocky, was training with Chris Weidman over at Sarah Longo and decided, oh, I don't want to be here anymore because I'm, I'm going to have to fight Chris Weidman because I'm going for the belt. And since then, he has looked terrible. And so I'm taking the decline of Lar uh, Filippo and weighing against the very small decline of Larkin and just saying that Larkin is just has a clear advantage here. So I'm going to take those three, put them together. Comes out around plus 148. Uh, that's my suggested play for you. Like I said, I am eyeing a couple of dogs. But yeah, that three-man parlay is my one suggested play for UFN 40. And that is all that I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's show. It was uh, short and sweet to the point. You can follow this show on Twitter at CageCash, or you can find it on Facebook at Facebook.com slash CageCash.MMA. You can follow me on Twitter at NayMillerMMA. Check out our sponsor, TheModCabin.com, and uh, check out our, our main website, TheMMAReport.com, for all your MMA news needs. Uh, enjoy the fights, guys.